Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the following motion standing in my name. Whereas is provided under Section 33.2 of the Value Added Tax, Cap 15.4 to the Act, that the Minister of Civil for Finance may by order alter the rate of interest in relation to tax payable under the Act. And whereas it is further provided under Section 33.2 of the Act, that an order made pursuant to Section 33.2 of the Act is subject to an affirmative resolution of the House. And whereas the Minister of Finance seeks approval of the draft value added tax alteration of rate of interest order by an affirmative resolution of the House to alter from the first day of May 2023 to the first day of May 2024 the rate of interest to 0% on the tax paid up to the financial year 2021. Be it resolved that the House, by, affirm by affirmative resolution, approves the value added tax alteration of rate of interest order, which alters from the first day of May 2023 to the first day of May 2024, the rate of interest to 0% on the tax paid up to the financial year of 2021. Mr. Speaker, before I make my contribution to this resolution, I'd like to join hmm? the lantern is out. Before I make my contribution, Mr. Speaker, to this resolution, I'd like to join the Deputy Prime Minister and the member for Sufre and yourself, Mr. Speaker, to welcome our visitors this morning or this afternoon to this horrible house, Mr. Speaker. As I said to them privately, Mr. Speaker, that the whole purpose of the youth economy was to create that environment for people with their skills, with the people with their talents, to go into businesses so they can monetize the, the, the obvious talent that they have, Mr. Speaker. And I want to invite them to visit the, the, the youth economy so that they can have a discussion with the officers to see how we can create their talent, we can convert their talent into a business, Mr. Speaker. So when I leave politics, I probably can get employed <laughs> by, by one of them, Mr. Speaker, as something, because I used to have these management skills a long time ago. I want to congratulate them, Mr. Speaker, and, and invite them to try to bring their, 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 their talents to what they call the higher heights, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this resolution is a fulfillment of a promise which we made, which I made in the budget address of the 20th of April 2023, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in that address, I said that we knew or we understood that businesses suffered from the COVID pandemic. And we understood that there was need to create a stimulus for them, particularly in the issues as they relate to the cash flow, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, I want to make it abundantly clear that VAT is a transaction tax, and it is collected on behalf of the government. The consumer pays the VAT, the business collects it, and after 21 days, the VAT is supposed to be given back to the government. It is not paid by the business, it is not paid by the owner, but it is paid by the consumer, Mr. Speaker. And that is a very important point to make, Mr. Speaker. It's a refund, the VAT is paid, and the consumer pays the VAT, and when the calculations are made, the government gets the difference, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, withholding VAT payments to the government is not a good practice. It is not a good practice, 
But, Mr. Speaker, the government understood or understands that particularly after COVID, businesses had cash flow problems. Cash flow problems, Mr. Speaker, that were not of their own making, Mr. Speaker. Although, if you listen to the opposition, they'll make you believe that COVID was caused by this government. But that's for another show, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, not only are we saying that during COVID there was an excuse, <coughs> but before COVID, there was no excuse why VAT was not refunded to the government after the calculations. And I want to add very quickly, Mr. Speaker, that there are some times when the government owes the, the business VAT of VAT refunds, Mr. Speaker, and we will ensure that if businesses pay in a timely basis, government will refund in a timely basis. So, Mr. Speaker, there was a total of $299 million worth of interest due on VAT payments, on late VAT payments. $299 million. And the government decided $299 million, Mr. Speaker, due on interest payments to the government, Mr. Speaker. Out of that, $65 million was for VAT. $65 million. So the government decided that to stimulate growth, to help in the cash flow of these businesses, because, Mr. Speaker, the $65 million in interest that was due on VAT ought to be paid. It should be paid. And the government to take measures to cause it to be paid, as has happened in other countries. But the government believed that in the interest of development, in the interest of giving some support to these businesses, in the interest of saying, we are in this thing together, in the interest of saying, listen to me, let us we will, you, we will tell you, we will say to you, do not pay that money, but you can reinvest it, you can pay some of your bills, you can develop your business. The government has waived for that payments due $65 million, Mr. Speaker. And we hope that businesses work with us, businesses work with the government and pay the arrears of that. We've waived the, we're going to waive the interest today, we're going to come next week to waive the penalties. So all we are asking is you pay what you owe the government minus, in that case, minus interest. Mr. Speaker, that in itself is a stimulus. That in itself is an indirect, is an indirect injection of funds into the economy because that money can be used for reinvestment and to increase employment and for business expansion, Mr. Speaker. So that is another of the promises that we've made, that we've kept, Mr. Speaker. And that comes together with the fact that we have increased the threshold for income tax to $25,000. Anybody in St. Lucia who gets less than $25,000 a year pays no income tax and increase from $18,000 where it was before. So we have given support, in that case, an amnesty to the people who owe that. And in the case of the regular income owner, we have said that your first $25,000, $25, you pay no income tax, Mr. Speaker. And that not only benefits the people who get less than $25,000, it benefits everyone. Because in the calculation of your tax, you begin, you exclude the first $25,000. So if you get $30,000 per year, you only pay tax on $5,000. As, as before, if you have got $30,000 a year, you pay tax on $12,000. So if you get $50,000 a year, you only pay tax on $25,000. So that $25,000 tax exemption does not only help the person who gets $25,000 and less. It helps everyone, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, that is another example 
of how this government intends to grow the economy. These are the creative strategies that we use to, uh, to grow the economy, Mr. Speaker, and to give businesses a new lease of life or a different lease of life, Mr. Speaker. These are the facts, Mr. Speaker. And I want the public of St. Lucia to listen to the facts and understand the issues, Mr. Speaker, so we can rid ourselves of the propaganda and the lies that, is, that are peddled in this country every day, Mr. Speaker. These are the facts. A government waving $65 million of interest in the first instance, and we will come next week to waive the penalties, Mr. Speaker, for people who did not pay the VAT. Who did not pay the VAT, Mr. Speaker? Are we going to waive it so we can give, we can start? And I'm saying to the business owners that please work together with the government so that we can enjoy prosperity for all and the businesses can have a new lease of life because that dead body, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I will deal with a letter that I got from the leader of the opposition. I will deal with it later when he spoke about the balance sheet of businesses, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I don't know if the, if the leader of the opposition understands that when you waive $25 million of payables, you know, Mr. Speaker, they just make statements without any sense. We are waiving $25 million of payables on the balance sheets of these businesses. Because this, that VAT due had to be shown in the balance sheet as an account payable. Either a short-term account payable or long-term account payable or long-term liability, Mr. Speaker. We are waving it. So we are strengthening these balance sheets, Mr. Speaker, so that the businesses can have a new lease of life and when they go into to borrow money they, and their balance sheets can look better, Mr. Speaker. So that's another means in which we are improving the balance sheets of these businesses, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I would encourage members to support this resolution, Mr. Speaker, because it really is direct assistance to businesses, direct assistance to businesses, Mr. Speaker. And let us, let us stop the lies and the fabrications that exist in just to create this unity, to get an atmosphere of fear, an atmosphere of insecurity in this country, Mr. Speaker, only because the people of St. Lucia decided that they wanted the St. Lucia Labour Party as the government of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. That's the only reason why, Mr. Speaker. Only because that reason, Mr. Speaker. All sorts of lies and malignment and propaganda and all kinds of, of false cities on Facebook and social media only because, Mr. Speaker, they cannot accept, they cannot accept the reality that this government won 15 out of the 17 seats. 13 plus 2 is 15, Mr. Speaker. And I hope, and I hope my math is right. <laughs> Because, <laughs> oh, Mr. <laughs> so, Mr. Speaker, that is the reality. 13 plus 2. And I heard somewhere that that's a small majority. What do you mean? I mean, Mr. Speaker, you know, I played that tip to my colleagues. <laughs> I will tell you what he said. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.